Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make hot cross buns and this is what it looks like. This bun is made with an enriched yeast dough, which means it has an egg and some butter, which gives it a really nice soft crumb. And this bun is so flavorful. It has ground cinnamon, we have some allspice, freshly grated nutmeg, and then we add some raisins and some candy mixed peel. And then of course, uh, hot cross buns are instantly recognizable because they have a cross on top. They are traditionally served at Good Friday. So to make your dough, if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, you will need both your paddle and your uh, dough hook. Now you could make this by hand. We have to knead this dough for about five to seven minutes on the machine, so you'll have to do it a little more, but it's not impossible to do it by hand. The first thing we're gonna do is all our dry ingredients. So you will need three and three quarter cups, which is 485 grams of all purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. Put that right in there. And then we're going to a little sweetness for this dough. I have a quarter of a cup, 55 grams of light brown sugar. You could use a granulated white sugar if you prefer. And then we will need one and a half teaspoon, six grams of salt, and then our spices. One teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and then I'm using a half a teaspoon of ground allspice. Ground allspice is kind of this warm, kind of woodsy kind of uh, spice, and it actually is made of the ground cinnamon, cloves, and more nutmeg, so it's really nice. And then I'm just adding a quarter of a teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. Let's put that on. And what I do, you can buy, usually in the spice section of your grocery store, these whole nutmegs. And then if you have either a microplane or even a box grater, all you have to do is just grate it. And I like, it really has a nice flavor, that freshly grated nutmeg. And then I'm going to add two teaspoons, seven grams. I'm using SAF. Now you could use either the gold or the red instant yeast. I like the instant yeast, one, because I don't need to proof it. I just put it right in there with the dry ingredients and I'm done. And it really gives a nice rise to our, um, our dough. But I will tell you in a minute, you can use the active dry yeast and I'll show you how to do, or I'll tell you how to do that in just a minute. So now what I'm going to do is just with my paddle attachment, I'm just going to put on low speed, just mix it all together. Okay, that looks good. And then for our wet ingredients, you will need one cup, which is 240 milliliters, 240 grams of just milk and have it at room temperature. Now, right at this point, if you wanted to use the active dry yeast, you will need one, the uh, quarter ounce package, which is seven grams of active dry yeast. And what you're gonna have to do is just take that milk, heat it to lukewarm, and then just add, stir in your yeast and let it sit it, just right on your counter, you know, until it's nice and starts to foam. That takes maybe five to 10 minutes. So that's how you use, uh, if you wanna use the active dry yeast. So I'm just gonna, but we're, I'm not. So I'm just gonna use room temperature milk. Just put it right in there. And then you will need one large egg, have your egg at room temperature. A large egg is 50 grams out of the shell. Just kind of lightly beat it up a bit and just add that. And then you will need five tablespoons, which is 70 grams. I'm using unsalted butter and it's nice and soft. So I just let it sit out on my counter an hour or so and I cut it into small pieces so it'll blend in. This is kind of like a brioche, but not. <laughs> not as much butter, and it's, so it's not as rich. Now, and then I'm also going to add, I need raisins, uh, a half a cup, 75 grams of dark raisins. You could use the golden. You could even use um, currants. If you don't want to use raisins, you could use you know, some dried cherries, 
some dried cranberries, even some cut up apricots. And then, to me, a hot cross bun has to have candied mixed peel. I know some people don't like it, and you can just leave it out or add a bit more raisins, but I'm going to add a quarter of a cup, 40 grams of the candied mixed peel. Sometimes, you know, because these are traditionally made around Easter, it's, it can be hard to find the candy mixed peel. So you could just, you know, like I said, add some more raisins or some other um, dried fruit. Now I'm just going to put my mixer just on low speed and I just want to get all that uh, flour moistened. Okay, that's good. So now I am going to switch over to my dough hook. If I can get all this, I'm going to use my hands. They're clean. And if you're doing this by hand, you're going to have to knead it for a bit. Get a workout. Make sure you get all that butter. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my mixer on speed one. And then I'm going to knead the dough, I'm going to say between five and seven minutes on first speed. So I want everything to get mixed together and then I want to have a nice soft and silky dough that cleans the bowl. So, you know, between five and seven minutes. I'm actually going to um, set my timer. Okay, so first speed. Okay, I think we're done. Okay. It's, it's very soft, nice and silky. It is a little sticky, I will say that. Now I'm just gonna check my dough, just take a little. As you can see, it's a little sticky. And then I'm just gonna pull it, it's called the window test. Kind of, I don't want it, I want it to have a bit of strength and not rip on me when I pull it gently, move it. You might have to wet your hands, but if I pull it, it's not ripping on me. So yeah, that's, that's needed enough. So, beautiful dough. It's not, you know, it's not as silky smooth as a brioche because we don't have quite as much butter, but it's still a really beautiful dough. Just going to knead that a few times, make sure dried fruit's mixed in. Okay, that looks good. So now, you need a large bowl. I'm just going to put like a little bit, just flavorless oil, you know, like a vegetable or canola, corn, even a light olive oil. Or you could just spray it with one of those non-stick sprays. We don't need a lot because there is butter in that dough. And then I just take paper towel. Get off the excess, and then I put it in, and then flip it so that the top has a little bit of oil. And there we have, oh, put that in there. So now let's just, I'm gonna check the temperature. Okay, I'm sitting at 73, 74, which is what, about 23C? That's about right. We want this to um, proof at room temperature. So I'm going to say around that 75 degree Fahrenheit, which is about 24 C. Um, so if your, you know, your room temperature is a little cooler than that, this is going to take a little longer to proof. Conversely, if it's a little warmer, it's going to take less. Sometimes if it's really cold in your kitchen, you, what you can do is have your oven turned off, but turn on your, um, your light and then you can put your dough in there. But be careful because that actually that light really heats up your oven so it can go up to pretty high. So I usually put the light on for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. If you have one of these infrared thermometers, kind of cool, you can um, put that in your oven. You can check your dough and 
check everything. It's kind of cool. So um, I'm just going to cover that with plastic wrap. Now we're going to let this proof. You know, this dough is a little slower with that, you know, that butter and that egg to proof. I'm going to say an hour and a half at uh, about 75 degrees Fahrenheit 24C. It won't double in size, it, it will, but it will rise. It'll be nice and soft and puffy. So I will show you how to do that. So we will be back in about an hour and a half. So I let the dough proof for an hour and a half. So we are ready. So as you can see, nice and soft. That's what you're looking for. So now, I'm going to divide this into 10 equal pieces. Digital scale is really handy here. I mean, you could eyeball it, but you know how I like a scale. It's such a handy tool. So I'm just going to weigh my dough. So it's, I'm going to have about 100 grams per hot cross bun. So I'll just... when you're doing this, when you're dividing, like I've got a straight edge here, you could use a knife. Don't like rip your dough. Cut straight down. And then I'll just do one and then to show you. So take your your dough. I find, you know, it's just slightly sticky. I don't, uh, you might want to put a little flour, but I find it's easier to do this if I don't flour my surface. So I just flatten it. I just take the dough, bring it into the center, like so, and then just flip it over. And then in, I guess the ball of my hand, is that, is that what you call it? I'm just going to roll it into a round. Get a little tension there like so. And then you will need a parchment lined baking sheet, or you could just uh, lightly butter it or even just spray it with one of those nonstick sprays. And then I just put it there and we're going to evenly space. I like to just flatten that just a little, like so, and carry on with the other ones. Hey, and the last one. There we go. So you just want to space them, you know, fairly evenly because they will grow. And now I like to brush the tops of the buns with an egg wash. One, it's going to give our uh, hot cross buns a really nice shine after they're uh, baked. But it's also going to, we're going to proof these again so it'll keep the uh, buns from drying out, putting the egg wash on now. I'm also going to do it again once they proof, so don't throw this out once you brush. Just cover it and keep it for a little bit. And then I'm just taking a pastry brush and I'm going to brush all the way around, top and sides. Just a light coating. Okay, so there. So for the egg wash, as you saw me, I took one large egg, which is 50 grams out of the shell. Have your egg at room temperature. I added one tablespoon of either like milk. You could just use water just to thin it out. And then I just used my uh, wire whisk to whisk those two together. So now we've um, got the egg wash on our buns. I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap, but I don't want the plastic wrap to stick to my hot cross buns because they're going to, as they proof, they're going to rise up. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to just uh, spray it with one of these non-stick sprays. You could just lightly oil your plastic wrap as well. So I just take that and then transfer it. And then you just want it to kind of lightly cover it. You don't want to like seal it down because they are the buns are going to rise as we uh, proof them uh, we're going to proof these about an hour again at room temperature 75 degrees fahrenheit which is 24 c and 
they're going to come up like almost double in size. So, you know, about an hour. And then when they're ready, you will, you'll want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 200 degrees Celsius. So that's what we're going to do. And we'll be right back. So it's been about an hour and we are ready to bake off our hot cross buns. So my oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius. And then I am going to brush the tops and sides of the buns again with our egg wash, just a light coating. Again, that's for get a beautiful shine on our baked buns. Okay, and our last one. One question you may have is how do you know whether your um, bread has been proofed enough? And you take your index, your finger and just press into your bun. You, it will have an indentation of your finger, but it will slowly come out. And that's when you know that your uh, bread has proofed enough. So now there, the big debate I think about hot cross buns is about the cross. Now, I grew up with, you put the cross on after the uh, buns have been baked and cooled, and it's a confectioner glaze that you pipe on. But there is another way. Some people like to do like a paste of flour and water, and then you can either, well, there's two ways. You can pipe it, which I do, like this, or you can even make a, a like a dough and roll it out and cut out strips either way. Or some people just like to take either a knife or kitchen shears and cut across. I'm actually going to do a double thing. I'm going to show you how to do the flour and water and then I'm actually going to, after they're baked and cooled, do another, uh, the confectioner glaze. I have to have that. <laughs> That's how I always had them and it, I just it has to be there. So for the, once you've put the egg wash on, to make the flour and the water for our paste, I have a half a cup, 65 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. I'm going to add just a little bit of sugar, one teaspoon, five grams. You can leave that out if you don't want it. And just whisk that. And then water. So I have, um, I'm going to say about a quarter of a cup, 60 mils, 60 grams of water. It really depends. We want like a, uh, a glaze consistency. So, you know, you may have to adjust. I'm just going to whisk the water in. I'll use, you know, about half of it. It's better, it's easier to add than take away the water. Although I get, you can add some more flour if you <laughs> start getting into that. So a little more. Okay, so I have a nice smooth paste. You can see, just kind of drops down. Like I said, if you wanted to, some people like to make a dough, so you'd obviously not add as much water if you want to roll that out. Now, um, to pipe it, you can just take a little plastic bag and snip off the end. Or what I have here is I've just got a pastry bag and I've fit, just put a small plain tip. This is a Wilton number no. five. And then put the tip in there and then roll back your bag. I find it easier if I just take a glass, put it in. I just find that easier to <laughs> transfer. And just put that like so. Okay. And you can, I didn't have, like my uh, strips are not that wide. You can have, I've seen them in bakeries like really wide. So it's up to you what you want, how thick you want that cross to be. And just always just hold with one hand and guide with the other and just do your strips. One this way and the other way. Simple enough. And 
And our last one. Okay, pretty cool looking. So now to bake them. Uh, everyone's oven is a little different. I'm going to say 15 to 17 minutes. You don't want, you want them, they will turn golden brown. And, but when you feel them, you want them still a little soft because a hot cross bun, you don't want it like really firm like bread with a hard outer crust. It's, it's going to feel, when you take it, it's going to feel a little soft. So 15 to 17 minutes. I do like to rotate my baking sheet front to back about halfway through baking. So our hot cross buns are done. Don't they look gorgeous? Oh, um, so put your baking sheet on a wire rack. Now, just when I touch these, they're, they're firm, but there's a little softness to them. That's how I like them. We're going to let them cool down completely. And then I am going to make that confectioner glaze and we're going to pipe that on top of our cross there. Now, because that adds a little bit of sweetness, which I think hot cross buns need. If you are a person that doesn't want to do that glaze, there are other ways to get sweetness. One, you could take some apricot preserves, heat that up, strain them to get rid of any lumps, brush that on, that will give you the added sweetness plus even more shine. You could take equal parts sugar and water and make a sugar syrup. So take maybe a half a cup, 120 milliliters of water, half a cup, 100 grams of granulated white sugar, boil that until the sugar dissolves, and then you could put brush that on. You could also use honey, you could use golden syrup, corn syrup, so that way you'd get shine plus sweetness. But like I said, I like the confectioner glaze, so I'm going to let these cool down, and that's what we're going to do when we come back. So now we're ready to make our glaze. In a bowl, I have a half a cup, which is 60 grams of confectioner sugar. You may know that as powdered icing sugar. I did sift it because powdered sugar tends to have lumps. And then I like to add like just a pinch of pure vanilla extract. Like that's like an eighth of a teaspoon. It's just for flavoring, so you can leave that out. And then we're going to add maybe about a tablespoon of either milk or cream. I don't add it all at once because what we want to get this is a piping consistency. So may vary. So I am going to need that full tablespoon. And again, um, for piping, you can take a, again, plastic bag, snip off the end, or I've done the same thing. I've got my piping bag fit with a small plain tip, number five, Wilton, and I'm putting it in the glass again to make it easier. And same as before, just squeeze your bag, and I'm just going to... You can do a really thick glaze or a thin line. Like so, let's do a couple. And then what you wanna do is just let this sit and it will firm up, especially before you um, cover them. You wanna make sure that that icing has hardened. So that's what you do. Now, hot cross buns are really good the day they're made. You can cover and store them at room temperature, you know, two, three days. And you can freeze them for about a month. If I was going to freeze them, I wouldn't put on that confectioner glaze. I would then, when you take them out of the freezer, if you do want to put the glaze on, then put it on then. So I think that they look so pretty. I'm going to eat it right away. My glaze is still a little soft, but I don't mind that. Now, oh, as you can see, this is really nice and soft. 
inside. Now, I'm going to eat it plain, but I really like them with butter. Everything tastes better with butter. But. Mm. They are so good. I mean, I used to buy my hot cross buns, but I really prefer the flavor of freshly baked yourself. So I like the glaze on top, adds that little bit of sweetness. The buns are so soft and tender. And the flavoring, I like the, the spices, I like the, the raisins and the mixed um, candy peel. So on the first day, I tend to just put some butter on them. If you cover and store them, then what I like to do is cut them in half. I toast them. I just put them under the broiler in your oven, nice and toasty. Put some butter on them. And then I just love it with a slice of sharp cheddar cheese. To me, that's just perfect. So you have to make these. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank you.